What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and FINRA saga. And guys, uh, for today's video I have an amazing news. I think uh, it is the best news for the entire year. Not only for 2024 but for 2023 as well. I have to admit that uh, we have the first major win. I think uh, we achieved the result uh, that uh, might be a pivotal point in the entire MMTLP saga. And guys, before we dive deep into all of this, just hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. It is very important for me to see the support from you, from my viewers. So let's start with the news. On the MMTLP resources, you can see this article that was published just yesterday, just several hours ago. Congressman Norman says, time for subpoena and public hearings. So, let me quote you further. Representative Ralph Norman indicates on the What's Bugging Me podcast that it's time for Gary to come before his committee and hold public hearings. And uh, Dennis Neal wrote this. Breaking. Uh, Representative Ralph Norman just told me on What's Bugging Me on Ricochet that FINRA response on MMTLP is inadequate. SEC failed to respond at all. He now will ask Representative Comer to subpoena SEC for share audit data FINRA says it can't supply and push for public hearings. And uh, South Carolina Congressman Norman clearly see the writing on the wall for what's happening here and has vowed to keep moving forward by enlisting the help of Kentucky Representative James Comer for a subpoena and public hearing on MMTLP. So, and we also have uh, a, a confirmation from Ralph Norman himself. Let me show you this. We are on official Twitter of uh, Representative Ralph Norman, and uh, Ralph Norman reposted this tweet, uh, and uh, this tweet was written by Dennis Neal 16 hours ago. And let me show you this in details. So, guys and girls of the Torchlight Brigade MMTLP Army on MMTLP Fiasco, I can now confirm, based on my interview with Representative Ralph Norman on What's Bogging Me at 9 o'clock this AM, he did indeed light it up. This uh, congressman cares about the investors who were wronged by a finger fight, posting pot in a few hours thanks to magician at Ricochet. And guys, I think uh, it is the best news uh, for the entire 2023 and 2024. And uh, I told you on uh, multiple of my previous videos that I uh, published just uh, uh, recently that we are about to see a major breakthrough in our case. And guys, it's happening. It is happening right now. And uh, not only this, but we also have a lot of other potential bombshells that might help us to win this battle. But let's continue with the recent news. Let me show you some details uh, from the community members and uh, from Dennis Neal as well. So, Dennis Neal wrote this uh, 15 hours ago. Uh, he uh, did it uh, in response to the wise guy's tweet. And first of all, let me show you this tweet. So, uh, Johnny Tabaka wrote, Finra reporting, only 2.6 million shares short is not possible. Here is the known borrowed shares on December the 8th and December the 9th of 2022. 10 to 15 million shares borrowed equals 10 to 15 million shares shorted, minimum. Not saying naked, but definitely short. Lending shares cost retailer to get screwed out of their NBH shares. Representative Norman knows, hence the subpoena hearings to follow. I'm here with receipts if you need me. And uh, he added this uh, screenshot. It is uh, the number of shares of uh, this QCIP number. And uh, the number is really huge, uh, from 10 to 15 million shares. And uh, as you can see, this data for the 2022, uh, for the December 8th to December uh, 12th. And guys, uh, you have to uh, know the difference in between uh, shares shorted and uh, shares that were nakedly shorted. In first case, uh, shares shorted, it is just an opened short position on certain asset. And uh, this is not a delusional process, it is just the process when someone bet against uh, the company and uh, that uh, this person uh, want to uh, benefit out of uh, the 
uh, movement of the price from uh, high to low uh, numbers. And uh, in order to close this position, all of these uh, short sellers should buy these shares. And uh, definitely when they uh, do it, uh, the price of this asset uh, is uh, moving higher. And uh, the second, uh, the second uh, type of shorting, it is a naked short position. And uh, it is completely illegal. This position is opened not by borrowing uh, these shares from uh, the existing shareholders. It is just uh, shares that uh, were created uh, illegally and uh, that uh, doesn't have any relationships uh, with the uh, real company. And this means this process not only bad for the price of the shares because uh, it is the short position by itself, but it is also a delusional, delusional event that uh, reduces the price uh, of uh, the entire uh, number of shares for the entire uh, number of shareholders by the definition because this process increases the number of shares so and uh, let me show you the response let me show you the comment of uh, dennis neil he said so from the get-go seven times as many shares sold short as finra says just start finra says it is unable to provide full share count and audit so how can it be sure there was zero naked shorting as it claims and yes, if they stated they cannot provide the real share count, uh, how can they use the 2.6 million shares that were shorted uh, back in December of 2022? They are contradicting uh, themselves. On top of that, guys, let me show you this. Richard Hoffman wrote this uh, five hours ago, and he said, as Fina has indicated, it doesn't count or control shorts that leave the country. Shouldn't they require brokers to disclose to clients in large print to the effect? Warning, we do not know the accurate share count for the securities you may be purchasing. It is likely that any security purchased will have a lower value than stated in account statements and that more dilutive shares are in circulation that represent it. So, he added also this, and perhaps legislation should be passed requiring an obvious warning label. And guys, definitely none of the broker dealers will publish this warning because it is impossible to have this situation because authorities has to know the exact uh, situation on the market. It is their duty. And let me show you what due diligence wrote in regards to this issue. Hey, FINRA and SEC, can I just ask you how and why the hell you would allow someone to be participant in our markets and then claim that you have no jurisdictional oversight or authority over them? This statement all but tells bad actors to move offshore and steal from hardworking American investors. Well, it's not gonna fly this time. This time you are going to answer for what you've done and allow them to do. We are coming. Write it down. And I think, uh, yes, uh, this is a complete nonsense. When the authorities uh, stated that they don't know what is the real share count for certain assets and it is out of uh, their jurisdiction to oversight over them. It is just pure nonsense. And uh, let me show you uh, another quite interesting information. And let me remind you that uh, we have only the letter uh, from FINRA, the response from FINRA. And we don't have any uh, responses uh, from uh, SEC and Gary Gessler. And let me show you that Rare DD wrote uh, this uh, tweet. And uh, I think uh, for now Gary Gessler is scared to death. And uh, here is the evidence uh, that Gary Gessler is uh, trying to uh, solve for this problem. At least he, he tried to solve this problem uh, at the end of 2023. And Rare DD published this. Any guess as uh, to what they discussed in this meeting? Here you can see the screenshot, uh, and uh, it was uh, the date, uh, it was uh, the end of September, as you can see, uh, September uh, 27th, 2023. And uh, it says, two days after being questioned by Congressman Ralph Norman and weeks after being questioned by Senator Mike Grappa, Garen Gensler met with FINRA. And uh, here is uh, the schedule of this meeting. As you can see, on September 29th, 2023, uh, it was the meeting at 12 p.m. with Financial Industry Regulatory Authority with Robert Cook uh, and other uh, C-Levels executives. And guys, 
What uh, was uh, the topic of uh, this meeting? I think it was an MMTLP, because uh, we know for sure Gary Gensler is aware of our situation. Even uh, in, back in April of 2023, when Anna Drates uh, meet him in person in Congress, I believe, uh, and we have uh, the evidence of this meeting. Let me show you somewhere here. Uh, wait a second. Uh, here is uh, the tweet, uh, the Twitter account of Anna Trades, and we have uh, the very first tweet uh, is this one when she asked, and it happened uh, on April the 9th, 2023. She asked uh, Gary Gensler these tricky questions about MMTLP, and since then, if uh, okay, let's say he didn't know uh, uh, previously about this uh, saga, but at this point, he knew. He knew that uh, it was more than 65,000 uh, people who were trapped by this illegal activity. And uh, definitely, it is his duty to solve this problem and he does nothing. He still keeps silence and uh, he don't want uh, to uh, make any responses. The only intention of Gargasser, in my opinion, for now is to kick this can down the road, because he knows he will not uh, be ahead of SEC commission anymore and the next uh, election date I think will be uh, within next several months, if I remember it correct, and uh, Gary Gessler will leave this post. And uh, this is how he tries uh, to avoid any responsibility, but guys, I think uh, for now it may be even a real sentence in prison for the wrongdoers. And that is why I think uh, Gary Gensler is scared to death. So I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel with notification bell. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad. I just want to get caught up in this life. I'm crazy, I'm bad. Doing no cap.